In the previous lesson, we discussed the concept of ADT and we illustrated it using one of the .NET's built-in ADTs to work with collection of objects, the array list. In this lesson, we are going to discuss its generic equivalent, a type safe and which in most cases can perform better, the generic list. The generic list is a class that is part of the system that collections the generic namespace. It implements the iList generic interface by using an array whose size is dynamically increased as required. Although it has similar functionalities with ArrayList, which include methods like add, remove, binary search, sort, and so on, to manipulate list, the main difference is that it represents a strongly typed list of objects. For complete reference of all its properties and methods, please check the Microsoft documentation on generic list class. While in this video, I'm going to highlight only the important things that you need to understand when using the generic list over array list. So let's begin. For this demonstration, make sure that you reference both the system that collections for the array list and the system that collections that generic for the generic list. Let's compare both of these collections simultaneously so you can easily see their similarities and differences and that we can see one's advantage over the other. Unlike with ArrayList, where you don't need to specify the data type of your collection upon instantiation, to create a collection using generic list, you must specify the type upon declaration. At first glance, it seems that the ArrayList is much easier to look at with lesser code compared to this generic list. Now, let's add three items to both collections. I'll use the add method to add items 5, 14, and 10. And then I'll display the content for my array list using the for each loop. I'll copy this code to do the same for my generic list. I'll just have to change this to my generic list. Now let's check the output. And as you can see, both the array list and the generic list were created. Items were added using the same method and displayed their contents exactly the same using the for each loop. So what do you think is the major difference if they can perform similar functions? As I mentioned earlier, the main difference is that the generic list represent a strongly typed list of objects. But what does it mean? When we say strongly typed, it means that the data type of the object is known during compilation. And it triggers an error if there is a violation during compilation time, not during runtime. Notice that if I add one more item to my array list collection, let's say a string joed, you might get confused. Why am I adding a string in my array list of numbers? Well, actually, this my array list collection does not specify its type of object to collect, meaning it is not strongly typed. And in effect, we can add any type of object to it, and it will still be acceptable during compile time. Yes, it will get compiled, so what seems to be the problem with that? As much as possible, when we develop programs, we want to receive compile time error instead of runtime error. Because compile time error can easily be fixed, while runtime error causes our application to break and crash while running. So when we run this application, can you guess what will happen? Let's check. Exactly, it crashed. So what triggers the error? If you check both the output and the error message, you'll see that items 5, 14, and 10 were displayed but when the item string joined is to be displayed, it crashes, and the error points to int item saying a specified class is not valid. And it makes sense, a string joined cannot be converted to int32. So let's go back to our code. Well, actually, there is a remedy to this one. By using an implicit local type variable declaration var, var is similar to a strongly typed declaration. The main difference is that you let your compiler do the overhead work and determine the type for you during compilation. Let's rerun the code and see what happens. And it works. Although it looks good and the use of var declaration looks promising, and actually it is, you'll discover dozens of great use for this implicit local type declaration in the future. But for now, let's focus on the major differences between array list and generic list. If I modify the code inside this for each loop and say, I want to add a value of 1 to every item in my array list before displaying it, you'll see that it won't allow me because it says here, the operator plus cannot be applied to operands of type object and int. So when we use var in our declaration to iterate each item in our array list, item is treated as a generic object. 
without a specific type yet, and it will only be determined later during the compilation time. In short, if I want this error to be removed, I can change this implicit declaration var back to explicit type declaration. But we know that the problem will occur during runtime since not all items in the collection can be converted to in32. Similarly, if we use the var keyword here, we accepted each item as a generic object. For this to compile, we need additional explicit type cast to the object before we can use it for its intended operation. But this doesn't really solve the problem. In compile time, it does, but if we run the application, same as before, the first three items, which are numbers, were actually displayed and a successful plus one operation was performed. But unfortunately, explicit type casting to this item during runtime causes an error. It means that if we want this thing to work, we need an extra code and extra work for your compiler just to fix this problem. I'll put an extra condition to check if the item is of type int 32, then this is the only type that I'm going to process. Otherwise, if it is of other type like string, bool, double, and so on, I'll ignore it. Let's see the result. And obviously, we don't see any error message, our code didn't break, and we only process the adding of one to the first three items in the collections, which are numbers. The real problem is not the use of var or the items in the collection, but the container itself. ArrayList is very useful and very flexible because you can easily collect items of any type. But the downside is that you will end up doing some extra work of checking and explicit typecasting during runtime. Because if you don't, or you're unable to handle it properly in your code, though it will surely compile, but your application might unexpectedly break. That's why in C Sharp 2.0, the generic collection was introduced. This is to overcome the overhead work of boxing and unboxing of type in storing and retrieving of data. Thus, performance is improved. If you take a look at our generic list upon declaration, the type was already specified. And because of this, every item that will be stored using either add or insert method, the item must be of the same type as declared. Otherwise, it won't compile. The good thing is that you can be sure that all items in your collection is of the same type and it will be detected during the compile time. Another good thing is that you can use the var keyword in replacement of the explicit type declaration and we can perform operations that we don't have to worry if this might break during runtime because it won't. And as you can see, the output is still the same but the performance is much better. So remember that it is better if errors are presented and handled during compile time rather than runtime. So, have time to explore the different methods associated with the generic list like insert, remove, sort, search, and so on, similar to your array list. Because for our next lesson, we are going to learn how to build our user-defined list and implement these methods using our own algorithms with our chosen data structure. And again, thanks for watching. And if you want to receive updates for more programming and circuit tutorials, please click the subscribe button. And if you haven't watched my previous lessons, all the links are provided below.